Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and well, you may have heard the news, Cassini mission is over. This beautiful spacecraft has actually collided with planet Saturn and is now part of its atmosphere. Today we're going to briefly revisit uh, Cassini mission as we have in the past and we're going to talk about the end to this mission. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So to do all of this, I'm using NASA's eyes, a very awesome, very beautiful and absolutely free software that you can download directly from NASA. And basically what you're seeing here is the simulation of the Cassini mission with all of the sort of key moments in its mission where you get to kind of go through each of them individually and you get to discover what Cassini discovered and kind of go through quite a lot of, of uh, various uh, specific scientific discoveries. Like for example, we've discovered various auroras on Saturn. We've also discovered uh, several new moons. So we've discovered new rings. And specifically here, if you go by numbers, um, Cassini mission took over 450,000 pictures. And you can actually see some of them in the simulation, specifically the more important ones, like uh, the infamous shot of uh, the uh, geysers here, or I guess you would call them water ice emissions from um, Enceladus, one of the moons of Saturn. And so you can kind of go through these pictures, uh, specifically the more important ones, uh, and discover what it is that we discovered through 13 years of being on or around Saturn. Now this mission actually started 20 years ago and finished on September 15, 2017. And it was one of the most complex space missions ever. And I've talked about this in a lot of detail in one of the previous videos. Definitely check it out on the channel. And I've also used this simulation to kind of go through all of this before. But today we're going to talk about the end of the mission and just discuss some of the achievements and specifically the numbers behind this mission. Now, as I mentioned, 450,000 pictures and something like 630 gigabytes of data that was processed and essentially uh, taught us quite a lot about, you know, moons of Saturn, uh, rings of Saturn, the magnetosphere of Saturn, and so on. And uh, the actual discoveries included uh, finding two, not one, but two oceans on these beautiful moons. One of them was on Titan. Here we discovered not water, but uh, unusual methane and ethane lakes and uh, possibly oceans that I kind of want to see if I can display here. There you go. If I show you, if I show you the radar image and possibly topography, it might show you there are those beautiful lakes that we discovered. And also, of course, the underwater oceans of Enceladus that we now know exist and spew out those beautiful mists right there. Now this mission is actually over for one simple reason. When this spacecraft left, uh, or I guess when it approached Saturn, it was something like uh, 5.7 ton in weight, and most of this weight was actually this, it was the propellant. When it finished the mission, it was only about 2 tons, so 3 tons was essentially the fuel. And once it was out of fuel, well, we had to do something with it. And specifically here, we decided to crash it into Saturn to study the atmosphere, but to also essentially uh, prevent any kind of a contamination, uh, specifically bacterial contamination, on other moons of Saturn like Enceladus and Titan. Because if one day we decide to go there and look for life, if there's life there from Earth, that'll be quite a bummer. And this beautiful mission used quite a lot of uh, various instruments, specifically there were actually 12 scientific instruments, um, including a very complex camera and uh, various ultraviolet imaging spe spectrographs, infrared mapping spectrometers, uh, radar, uh, radio science, and plasma spectrometer to measure magnetosphere. And so it's a very, very complex craft that was able to operate completely autonomously for something like 13 years around Saturn. As you can see, it's turning, it's moving around, it's getting some data, it's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So this was a super, super complex mission. And quite a lot of countries participated in this mission. 
uh, I believe almost 30 countries actually were responsible for building and launching and maintaining this craft. And so all in all, this is definitely one of the coolest missions out there, specifically because the other part of Cassini Huygens mission was the Huygens. Huygens probe, uh, let me just show it to you. So right around here, it still has the Huygens probe attached to the craft right there. And as we advance time here, you get to see that it separates and disappears and is now going to be approaching uh, Titan and then landing on it. So if I advance time a little bit just so you can actually see it, there is the beautiful Huygens probe that's going to land on Titan and will take an amazing array of uh, pictures that is going to be the first extraterrestrial uh, world that we actually photographed in such a detail with such a complex landing. Uh, obviously there were pictures from planets like Mars and Venus, but this one is definitely, definitely a lot more complicated. And so now as we're approaching Titan, you'll notice how this probe is going to basically land on its surface and transmit a lot of awesome data. So this was honestly, I think, one of the coolest sort of achievements of humanity to date, especially in early 2000s. And, and then all of this obviously um, ended can actually end all of this right uh, here, the grand finale. And then all of this ended on September 15th, 2017, when Cassini uh, transmitted its last transmission and it took like 83 minutes for it to actually reach Earth. So there is that last uh, approach after something like 294 orbits around Saturn. And it's pointing straight at Earth because it's transmitting um, continuously all of this data about the upper atmosphere of Saturn that we're going to be studying for quite a while. And as it's approaching the atmosphere, it's going to plunge inside and you'll hear the last beep of this beautiful probe. And there is that transmission. You actually get to see a uh, speed of transmission, basically speed of light in real time. We're going to accelerate this a little bit. We're pointing directly at Earth. And let's just go back to Cassini for a second because this was actually not the last orbit, apparently. I made a bit of a mistake. And here we go. So three, two, one, transmitting the data. We're moving towards Saturn. And as soon as we get close enough, the transmission will be interrupted very rudely, if I may say so. But obviously this is what we intended to do. So as we're passing, through uh, the upper atmosphere here and sort of in front of the rings of Saturn, we will hear the last beep from beautiful Cassini and that's it. But obviously this will take 83 minutes to reach Earth. So this was essentially what NASA was transmitting on September 15th, 2017, and this is how the mission ended. Now, obviously we hope that there will be more missions and specifically now we need to have missions to Neptune and to Uranus because these objects have never really been studied in a lot of detail, they've only been visited once by Voyager 2, and we unfortunately don't know enough about them. So let's go there and let's learn something on them as well. And so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Goodbye Cassini, it was really nice of you to take all those photos, and hopefully we'll get to explore Titan and maybe even colonize it one day as well. This is not Titan obviously, this is Triton, a moon of Neptune. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Check out this app, it's absolutely free, and you can get it from NASA, it's called NASA's Ice, and I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And here's the replay of that last final transmission.